I'm supposing that was the first really big reunion. Anyway, some of the kids got overly excited about being up in the mountains, in the woods, and wandered off and explored as they are, uh, have a tendency to do. And as uh, evening, evening drew near, we realized that some of them were not present, and we had no idea where they were. So who was it that had wandered off, Artie? Do you remember who that was? No, it was me and John. It was it was me and John. I don't know where Artie and John were on the next mountain over, and uh, it was getting dark, and we were wondering if we would ever be able to retrieve them. Not that we really... <coughs> This always chokes me up. <laughs> Not that we necessarily wanted to, but we could hear them hollering from the next mountain over in desperation because the sun was setting and of course there were wild creatures about and they were young kids. And I think they probably were a little frightened. Were you frightened already? I don't remember being frightened. Okay, so somehow he was consoled by the spirit. And he didn't feel the fright that he should have felt. Anyway, we, we uh, I can't remember, I remember going to find them. And I don't remember exactly how we retrieved them. But somehow, by some miracle, we managed in the dark, dark to find our way over to the next mountain and to bring them back and to save their their lives. So those of you who are Arden, Arden's progeny and he is here tonight and John, you can thank me for that. Uh, I, I was happy to be of service. Hey, Arden. What do you want me to say? Well,
Well, I don't like microphones. Um, and, uh, so my assignment is to speak of memories of past uh, family events, family occurrences. <laughs> I remember very clearly when Jay and I were, um, it was the Blackbridge family meeting, and you were home from your mission. Yeah, you've seen the picture. I have proof. I, otherwise, I wouldn't have we and we were having a, a battle over the the uh, mint springs that came down off of. Uh, oh, it's called the mountain is called Pine Valley. Pine Valley Mountain. And I I had to show them, even though I was five years younger, he was a return missionary. That I, I had grown up in his absence, and I could take him down. Well, yeah. Right, yeah. <laughs> Where's so I have a memory. I have a memory. Larita, Larita. I have a memory of Larita um, at a family gathering in Virginia, and she was on a little pony. And I was over in the barn with my BB gun. And I was shooting that pony. That wasn't me, that was Alden. It was you. Was shot. you. That was Cracker Jack. And that was Alden you shot with the BB gun. I did not. No. Did. Wait, wait, <laughs> slow down. I, I didn't shoot you with the BB gun. I shot the pony yes. in the rear end. It was Alden. No, it was Arnie, not. wasn't it Alden? I don't remember. <laughs> I wasn't there, is he? Apparently this is you and Alden and Chad, not me. I remember another <laughs> gathering where uh, Artie tried to run through a window. And if you want to look at his scar, look at his scar. <laughs> he ran through the window and the glass went through his arm and then came up right through here. And he almost died. That's all I have. Well, I, I want to say... I remember when Chad had the BB gun and he asked me to hold up some old records while he shot the, them with the BB gun. And so I held up the old, I held up records while he shot them and it was all good and fun until he shot my thumb. And we were about to go bowling as a family. We were about to leave to go bowling, but I couldn't go bowling because my thumb had been shot with a BB. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> And I was on my way to get my 22 rifle. <laughs> and my father confiscated both because he went like a big baby, screaming into the house, saying that you've been shot. I was all of seven and years I, old. I went to get him and say, calm down, calm down. Let's talk about this. <laughs> there was no talk. Yeah, I didn't handle it very well as a seven-year-old. I, I cried. <laughs> serious note, I do have a memory that transformed my life a little bit, and I always think of it when we do reunion. It was, I uh, don't remember what reunion, but it was a reunion, um, and I was in my late 20s, I think, so I think it was California, one of those reunions up in the hill or something. <laughs> Anyway, Dad, uh, your grandfather, great grandfather, great great grandfather, Berkeley Compton, I mentioned this to a few of you. He and I were sitting on a mule uplifted, and it was just like this. Games were going on, kids were playing, people were everywhere. Dad was in his 70s by then, and he was feeling a little, what's a good word? Tired? Not overwhelmed, melancholy, reflective, uh, somber. And he said to me, we were sitting in like these camp chairs, and he said, um, he looked at like one like this and said, I was that age. This is 70 something year old man. And then he looked at a five year old and said, and I was that age. And then he looked at a 13 year old, how are you? He looked at a 15-year-old and said, and I was that age. 
and then a 25 year old and a 35 year old and he was looking at all of his posterity and, and all of all of it and it was a wonderful sight but somehow in his mind it was um he said you know he said chad um they say that life goes by in the what's the right word bat the flash the blink the blink of an eye and he says today is that way for me i lived through all those decades of all of that and i could sense in him that he had a different perspective and that there was there was something about i wish and i think that's what he said i wish that when I was 35 and 45 and 55, I could see like I can see now. And I thought then, well, you know, that's a good idea. I should try. I should try to live my life through the prism, through the eyes, through the perspective of a 70-something-year-old person. You're almost there. <laughs> 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 well, time's a tricky thing. Um, so, for all you teenagers, how old are you? How old is she? Uh, 80 something. No, 48. Are you 48? Yeah. <laughs> 46. Right. She's a compulsive liar. Marcel, <laughs> how old is Camelia really? Camelia. What does it mean to be in Greek? I have no idea. Well, you can decide. <laughs> you tell us. What does it mean to be your age? Whatever it is. Well, in any case, you can tell. <laughs> I'm a one. She's a philosopher at heart. Anyway, um, that's what Dad. That's what Dad said that day. And I believe it's good advice. Perspective precedes definition, and the perspective of a 70-year-old man that day seemed quite valuable to me as a 20 or 31-year-old something. I'd like to get rid of this mic now. And, uh, and Well, we couldn't breathe. It was awful. We wondered if we would die. And 
And she finally said, call the fire people or whoever. And she couldn't understand me. And she said, there, a hair tie? kind of off and on on the video chat, so, so she's probably seen some of you, but I just wanted to say for her, because she can't be here to say it, she's really grateful for her family, she's really grateful to be able to see all of us together, and yeah, she's just really appreciative, so that's that. So, I was... How old, how old are you now? I've always, I keep trying to figure out how much older than, than me you are. Okay, hang on, come over here. So I was 14. And you were born? And and so you were probably 11. I was born in 62. Okay, so I was born in 65. So you're, yeah. So, so yeah. And so John, John's got... Are you recording now? I'm recording. <laughs> so we were in the Sierra Nevadas, and we... Some of the adults took us on a hike. I don't remember who. Actually, I don't think it. I think it. Well, there were a couple of adults there. There, there, there were. I don't. I don't know if it was the Sierra Nevadas or some mountains just outside of the Bay Area. But we were in mountains. It was above the Bay Area. I knew that. Right. It was above the Bay Area. But and um, uh, anyway, so we had ran down a canyon, or uh, it was a canyon, kinda, or, or at least a valley, mm -hmm. and kind of up and down the sides, and it was kind of like an obstacle course, and. Everyone had fun, but Artie and I thought it was really cool, fun, so we decided we were going to hike back up and do it a second time, and that we would catch up to everybody else. So we hiked up and went, came down and did it again, and there was a dirt road, I remember, mm -hmm. turned to the right. right, and thought we were following everybody, and we didn't, we never found them, and started to get towards dusk, so we thought, well, we better head back before it gets dark. Mm -hmm. So we went back tried to find the same trail and canyon that we'd come up, but it was dark by the time we got back to that it gets dark area. At, it gets dark in the woods at night. And so we picked the canyon that we thought was the right one and started hiking back up the canyon. And at some point, and I don't, it's kind of fuzzy, but I remember it was getting like pitch dark. We had no flashlights or anything. And I started having an anxiety attack and couldn't breathe. And I thought I was having a heart attack because I couldn't breathe. And, my chest hurt and so uh, we stopped and Artie was lifting on my pants I think to try and help me breathe I don't know it was kind of like I got the wind knocked out of me okay of. and we decided to say a prayer so I, I'm sure it was you and you said the prayer and and it was just a few minutes later within I don't know only a couple minutes maybe five minutes or so off up up way up the hill and down over the other side we started hearing voices and then we started seeing lights right. flashing back and forth so they cool. found us but we were in the wrong canyon we were not heading back the way we'd come no we were we would have who knows where we would have yeah. ended up so we would have been two young boys in the pretty pretty far out there in the wilderness overnight yeah. if they hadn't found us so yeah cool that's the story all that's right my recollection of I, it anyway. and i'm glad to hear your your memory of it so awesome thanks john